Okay, thank you. Welcome to the uh, yeah, WooCommerce REST API integration session. I'm going to be talking through the benefits of integrating with the WooCommerce REST uh, API. Uh, just a quick show of hands, who's currently using WooCommerce on a WordPress website? Okay, and anyone currently doing any work with a WooCommerce API? A few of you, great. Okay, so just a bit, oops, uh, a bit about me. Uh, my name's Andrew Duncan. I'm the CEO, owner, developer, cleaner, everything else at a company called Databuzz. We're a Sydney-based um, uh, software development company. I started my software journey uh, almost uh, 30 years ago now, so that uh, makes me feel very old at this uh, moment in time. Um, I actually started here back at UTS um, back in the late 1980s, and uh, when I was here at UTS, all this talk of uh, Gutenberg and printing presses has um, jogged a few memories in me, and, and this building was actually owned by Fairfax, and this whole basement was actually one big uh, massive printing press, and you'd come here and they'd be printing off the Herald uh, and the Australian Financial Review overnight, and you know, those, those days are long gone, so it's a bit of a, a sign of the times. Okay, so uh, we're going to be talking about WooCommerce, just a quick bit about uh, WooCommerce for those who are not familiar with it. Uh, it's the plugin for uh, WordPress that turns your WordPress site into a, an online shop. Uh, it's open source, it's, um, it's free, it's customizable. There's over 400 um, extensions for WooCommerce alone, both paid and free. Um, it was started in uh, 2000, September 2011, and as you can see, they've had uh, gazillions of uh, downloads since then, and it's now part of the uh, automatic family. Okay, so I just want to talk a bit about my, um, my journey to how I got here to be doing, some, doing a lot of work with the uh, WooCommerce API. So um, I'm a WordPress user. My company's got two um, WordPress sites. And about five or six years ago, uh, we sell software products. And about five or six years ago, uh, we realized we need to have a better online shopping experience. We were just using um, some big chunky PayPal buttons, PayNow buttons back then, and you'd, customers would click the button and go to the PayPal site, fill in the details and we'd get an email and someone had bought something. That was, when we first did that, it was very exciting. Uh, but we then had to reply to that email, attach the thing they'd bought, send them a tax invoice. Often that email would bounce because the attachment was too big and if someone uh, bought it in, say, Friday US time, uh, they wouldn't get their software until Monday Australian time. And often they would think that we'd sort of scan them, and out their money, so it wasn't a great experience for anyone. So um, uh, about five, six years ago, yeah, I looked into um, uh, what was out there and found WooCommerce and within a short period of time had a had two uh, WooCommerce sites up and running and uh, we were doing online orders, uh, online software downloads, uh, instant tax invoices. Uh, we didn't have to do anything so life, life was really good. Uh, the only missing piece of the puzzle for us was we needed to get the, the data out of WooCommerce into our um, internal company systems and ultimately into our uh, accounting systems because we don't use WooCommerce to run our business, we use WooCommerce to run our online shop but we have other software applications to run the business, like a CRM and a, an, an accounting system. So being uh, software developers, we thought, let's use SQL. Um, most of you probably know that uh, WordPress and WooCommerce have got a MySQL backend, and uh, it made sense to us at the time. So we did a bit of research and um, worked out how to create a sort of complicated SQL view with lots of joins. Um, that looks terrible on the slide for some reason. Um, and uh, it sort of worked, but the, the, if you've ever worked with the back-end tables, there's no uh, orders table, there's no customers table, there's no uh, products table, there's no order line items table. So you've got to sort of use the post and the post meta table and, and work all that out yourself. Um, I'm not sure why that looks terrible. <laughs> the rest of my slides don't. Okay, so uh, that led us to the uh, uh, WooCommerce API, and we're not sure... Um, why we didn't start with a WooCommerce API in the first place because our company specializes in integration and we work with APIs sort of all day, every day. So for those who are not familiar with uh, what an API is, so API stands for Application Programming Interface. Um, there's the definition from uh, uh, Wikipedia. I essentially like to think of it as a, uh, a document that sets out the rules for getting my software talking to your software. And APIs are everywhere these days. There's uh, companies built on APIs. Um, there's some of the uh, companies you would have heard of. They've all sort of got APIs. So Twitter, Twilio is a company built around APIs for messaging and voice. Uh, in the accounting space in Australia, New Zealand, Xero and MYB have, have got APIs and big developer ecosystems built around those. And of course, WordPress itself and uh, WooCommerce. So why would you use the uh, WooCommerce API? So for a lot of people, it all comes down to uh, one word, and that's uh, integration. Um, 
in our business, we want to get the orders out of WooCommerce uh, into our CRM system, and then we want to get them into our uh, Xero, which is our uh, accounting software. Um, and the whole point of this is here yeah, to remove any sort of double data entry, double handling, that all leads to mistakes, and that's not, not the most uh, rewarding work uh, to do in the world. Uh, we've got lots of customers that have very complex sort of inventory systems, and they've been using that for years, and they want to get their inventory data pushed up into um, WooCommerce. They don't want to have to maintain two separate inventory systems. They just want to have a, a single source of truth. Uh, you might want to be doing bulk updates. So you might want to have a sale, drop the price of certain products, change their descriptions, um, and you've got all that in the inventory system and you just want to make that and push them all up uh, in one go without having to go and recreate those changes in uh, WooCommerce. Uh, we've also got a, uh, some other sort of interesting use cases. We've got some customers that uh, want their customers to pay for an order, but they don't want the customer to go to the, the WooCommerce site, find the products, add them to the cart, go to the checkout page, and go to the payment page. They just want to send them to a page where they pay. So uh, using the WooCommerce API, you can actually create an order, add the line items, put in the customer details, upload it, get the uh, payment page link, and just send that to the customer, and they just go and pay for it. Seems strange, but that's how some customers roll. So the benefits of all this is saving Saving time, saving money, uh, getting staff away from sort of manual repetitive tasks, double data entry, and that all leads to a state of peace and calm and, and, and zen-like state that I like to think about it. Um, in our business, it's a good feeling when we wake up in the morning and we've had some orders overnight and we know that they've automatically ended up in our CRM system and they've automatically ended up in our accounting system and we haven't had to uh, do anything essentially. So let's get into the details of the uh, WooCommerce API itself. So there's the URL for the, um, uh, the GitHub, the documentation. It's, it's very well documented. Uh, version 2 is the current version. Now, you, you don't need to install the API or enable it. It's just in WooCommerce. So everyone gets it automatically. At the moment, everyone gets version 1 and version 2. Uh, version 2 came out with WooCommerce 3. So uh, version 1's been deprecated as have what they call their previous um, legacy API. So don't use version one or the legacy ones. Start with version two, it's the only one being maintained. Um, it's fully integrated into the uh, WordPress uh, REST API. So it's a, it's a RESTful API. Uh, you can use uh, a standard HTTP verbs, which many of you are probably familiar with, like uh, get, post, put, delete to make requests and get a response back. Um, and it uses uh, REST API authentication. Uh, on the docs, you'll see um, code samples for a lot of the popular programming languages like curl, uh, Node.js, PHP, Python, and Ruby. OK, so I think I missed a slide there. Let me go back. Yes. So when you're working with a, an API for the first time, no matter what API it is, the first thing you're normally going to do is work out how do I authenticate. I can't upload or download until I've solved the um, authentication piece of the puzzle. Um, and with WooCommerce API, you get uh, two ways to authenticate. Um, and that depends whether your site's been served over HTTP or HTTPS. Uh, I'm not going to talk about authentication over HTTP. Um, it's this complex sort of one, OAuth 1.0 one-legged authentication system. It's quite a lot of series of steps. And, for, uh, and the reason essentially is if you're using WooCommerce, you're capturing uh, customer data, order data, and payment data. Uh, you re your site really shouldn't be served over HTTP unless you're just sort of developing locally. And authentication is much easier over HTTPS and uh, SSL certificates are extremely cheap these days and you renew them for two years and it takes 20, 30 minutes to install. Um, so there's really no reason why, in, our, in my mind at least, you shouldn't be using um, HTTPS and SSL. So the way it works with HTTPS is um, you generate a set of uh, REST API keys, a username and a, a consumer key and a consumer secret and they become your username and password when you uh, use the HTTP basic auth header. So every request you send to the API, you've got to include your authentication header, and uh, that's simply your REST uh, API keys. So how do you generate your REST API keys? Well, you go into the WooCommerce admin, and I'll show you this uh, in a minute, and you go and generate some REST API keys, and they'll generate a consumer key and a consumer secret. Sorry, my screenshots look really bad. OK. So now that you've got your REST API keys and your authentication part is solved, uh, I just want to talk through uh, each of the different types of common requests that you might make. So 
uh, there's broadly speaking, there's two types. There's the upload request to WooCommerce and there's the download request from WooCommerce to your application. So let's start with uploading and uh, we'll talk about creating a, um, uh, a record in WooCommerce. So you might want to upload a customer, uh, a product, a uh, category, a tag, whatever it might be. So you'll be doing a, a post to an endpoint. So um, in this case, I've got an example for doing a post to the uh, customer's endpoint. So to do that, you need to do, uh, include your authentication header. Uh, we're going to be sending all the data for the API is um, in JSON format. So you're going to be sending a JSON payload of your record that you're going to upload. And um, uh, so you need to include the content type application JSON header as well. So here's an example of um, what a uh, create customer request would look like. Uh, so we're doing a, a post to the customer's endpoint. We've got our consumer key, consumer secret authentication header, and our content type header. And then it's just the JSON data of the, the payload that we're uploading. And uh, when you create a record in WooCommerce, you're going to get back uh, the record in, in response. And that's going to include um, the, the WooCommerce ID. And you're typically going to want to pass out that ID and capture it and store it. Because if you ever want to do anything to this record again, whether it's updating it, deleting it, or retrieving it, uh, you need to know the ID. So uh, the ID will be included as an additional field. So you just got to be able to grab that and um, store it in your system. So an update request is, is very similar to a create request, except um, this time we're doing an HTTP put. So in the API world, post is normally create a resource, puts normally an update a resource. Um, this is where you need to know the ID, because you're going to append the ID to the end of the uh, URL that you're going to be uploading to. And you're going to be authenticating in the same way, content type header in the same way. And we're going to be sending a JSON payload as well. Um, here's an example of uh, an update request, very similar to a, a create request. Uh, the difference here is uh, you, can only, you, you only have to send the changes if you want to. You don't have to send the full record. So you can have a, a much smaller payload. Uh, in our business, we just the process for creating a record and updating is exactly the same. Because for us, programmatically, it's easy just to send the whole thing again, not have to try and work out the differences and capture the delta and just upload that. Um, but we do if we if we want to update the status of an order in WooCommerce, we just send up the status uh, in that case because it's easy just to send up the status rather than the whole order record with all the line items and text lines and so on. Okay, so that's uploading create an uh, update. Now I'll talk a bit about downloading. And um, with downloading, there's two broad types of requests you're going to make. You want to make a request to get a single record, or you might want to uh, make a request to get a, a lot of records. So give me all the orders from yesterday, or give me all my products in this category, or give me all my customers. Uh, so to request data, you're going to be doing an HTTP GET. And uh, that's going to go to, so let's talk about a single record first. So uh, once again, you need to know the ID of the record that you want to get when you're doing a, a single request. Um, and we're not sending any, any data, any payload JSON data. We're just saying, go to that URL and get me that record. Uh, so all we have to do is pass in the authentication header only, no content type header or, or JSON payload. And the response will be the, um, the same as for a put or an update. You'll get the full record back uh, with all the data uh, returned. And that's what a uh, GET request might look like. And you can see um, that's the same for a POST and an update. The ID is um, part of the payload there. So when you're doing a POST or request, that's where the ID comes in, and you go and, and uh, grab that. OK, so it's a single uh, record request. Now uh, talk a bit about getting uh, multiple records. So uh, in our business, we often want to download all the orders between a particular date range. So once again, you do an HTTP GET request. Uh, to the uh, particular endpoint, so orders in this case, uh, same as a single record. There's no authentication. Uh, there's no payload, no uh, uh, content type header, just the uh, authentication header. And in this case, you're going to get a, a JSON array, so a series of, of records are going to come back. And uh, once you start working with multiple uh, record requests, um, you can start to use parameters and, and pagination, which I'll talk about a bit more in a second. But um, if we look at my example here, uh, I'm saying. Uh, get me all the orders after this timestamp and before this timestamp, and give me page one, and order them by the ID and in uh, ascending order. So there, that's an example of some of the uh, parameters that you can include. And they're all on the WooCommerce document API docs pages. OK, so pagination is important. Um, most APIs, when you make a request to get 
a lot of records aren't going to return every single record because that could potentially be thousands of records. And that's going to swamp your connection and something's going to crash or uh, run out of memory at some point. So there's normally limits to how much uh, data records you can get at any one time. Uh, with WooCommerce, the, uh, the uh, default is 10 items um, per page. And you can um, override that uh, by specifying a value for the uh, per page parameter. Um, so you can increase that or decrease that as, as your needs fit. And you can choose which page you want to get using the, uh, per, uh, using the page parameter. So combining the page parameter and the per page parameter leads to which records you're going to be uh, returned. Now, when you get the, all the records back, uh, you could go through and count how many you got and try and work out if you need to make another request. Uh, or you can just look in the uh, response headers that will come back from the API. And there's two in particular, the XWP total and the XWP total pages response headers, which I'll show in a sec. And they tell you how many records were found in your request and how many pages you're going to need to uh, get them all. And it also includes what's called the link header. So uh, rather than you trying to work out what the URL for the next request for page two might be, it'll include that and give it to you uh, for you. So here's what the uh, response headers look like. Um, I've highlighted a few things in red. So up the top is the response code. So uh, generally with any API, when you're making a request, you want to check the response code and see if it was successful. So the 200 series are the successful requests. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Um, and in the middle there, there's the XWP total and the XWP total pages. So my request led to 21 records being found. And with the default of 10 items per page, I'm going to have to make three requests to get those. So page one is records 1 to 10, page 2, 11 to 20, and page 3 is record 21. And it, because there's another page, it tells me what the link to that second page that I could then go to, and that's page 2 there. So I just would need to retrieve that, and that becomes my URL for my second uh, next request and, and so on. OK, so the final type of request I want to uh, talk about is the uh, delete request. Uh, in this case, you're going to be doing an HTTP delete to, uh, to the particular endpoint. Uh, very similar to the get and the update in that you're going to need the ID of the record that you want to delete. Um, and you're not uploading upload any, any data. You're just saying delete this record, essentially. So you just need to pass in the authentication header. Um, the only difference here is some resources, and it's all in the WooCommerce uh, API documentation, don't support the concept of trashing, where you delete something and it just goes into the trash. Um, the documents will tell you this, but sometimes you've got to uh, include this for equals true parameter, and that will um, permanently delete the record straight away. So uh, check the docs, and it'll tell you whether you need to include that for equals true parameter. And if so, uh, the record gets deleted immediately. You'll get the full JSON record back, but it's, it's gone at that point. OK, so just some tips that I've sort of picked up over the years of working with the uh, various WooCommerce APIs. Uh, Timestamps are always in the... ISO 8601 format, so year, month, date, and then the time. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you should always be checking the response code to see if your request was successful. You can't rely on anything else, essentially. Uh, so uh, 200 and 201 are the success codes for a, a create or an update. Um, if you get a 400 error, for example, it's a bad request. Your JSON was invalid or your uh, you had an unauthorized error issue with your API keys. Uh, 500 series means you've got some sort of server error and so on. So always be checking for the uh, response code. Uh, if you're going to be uploading products and product images, the WooCommerce API allows you to upload an image by passing in the URL to that image so it can pull it down and ingest it. Or you can uh, pass in the WooCommerce Media Library ID for that particular image if it's already in um, uh, the WordPress Media Library. Sorry. Um, if you want to upload local files, the WordPress API doesn't support uh, the WooCommerce API doesn't support that. You've got to use the WordPress Media API to upload the file first, get the ID, and then you can upload that uh, re reference that in your uh, WooCommerce upload. Uh, most of my customers uh, you uh, need custom fields for their WooCommerce sites. They uh, they need more fields than the WooCommerce core provides, so they need fields for customers, for orders, for products. And there's various ways you can create those custom fields. You can do it in PHP, or you can use uh, one of many uh, custom field plugins out there. So the WooCommerce API has no knowledge about any custom fields that you might create. Um, but it does generally include them in what's called the, the metadata section. And I'll show an example of that shortly. 
Uh, so just keep that back in mind. If you create custom fields, WooCommerce won't know about them, but the metadata will. Um, yep, encourage you to report bugs if you find any. I've found about a dozen over the years, and I've reported them, and they've been, I've been very impressed with how quickly they've been fixed. They normally get included in the next release of uh, WooCommerce, in my experience. So um, please report your bugs via the GitHub page. Uh, if you're not sure where to start with any of this, if you haven't done any API work, I uh, recommend a tool like Postman. It's a free uh, HTTP client that you can use to create these requests, send them, and check the response. So just go to getpostman.com, and I'll give you a quick demo of one of those in a minute. And uh, finally, uh, webhooks complement the API very nicely. Anyone using webhooks with WooCommerce at the moment? Yep. So in our business, when we get a new order, we have a webhook that fires off, and that sends that order to one of our servers. We then use the API to pull down the full details of that order, and then we send it off to Zero, our accounting software. So uh, webhooks and the API uh, uh, work very nicely hand in hand together. Okay, so let's have a qu quick few demos. Okay. Okay, so this is um, Postman. Um, it's a free HTTP client, um, and I won't go into the details of how Postman works, but essentially you can create uh, requests. So I've, I'm saying I want to uh, create a post request, and I've put in the, um, the URL of my site. Um, so I'm going to say I want to, I'm going to use the products tags endpoint. So I want to create a new product tag in my WooCommerce site. And uh, if I go to authorization, I've said I want to use basic auth, and I've put in my consumer key and consumer secret for my REST API keys. Uh, and then I just need to put in the body. So the documentation tells me what, how I need to construct my bo the body. In this case, I just need to pass in the name of the uh, tag I want to create. So I'm going to call it WordCamp Sydney. And I'll go and send that off. And assuming I'm on the internet. Uh, there we go. So uh, you'll see it's come back with um, the JSON response. So it's created a tag, ID number. 93, it's given it a name, a slug. Uh, I left the description blank. Uh, it's given me the URL, it's given me all this other metadata for it. Um, but that's how easy it is to uh, create a product tag. And you could obviously do that in bulk and create um, uh, lots of tags. OK, so that's a quick demo of Postman. Um, so here's the, uh, oops, yeah, here's the, here's what the documentation uh, looks like on the uh, WooCommerce site. So my screen's got very truncated here. Um, it takes you through all the um, uh, authentication and so on, and then you can jump into the details for each of the particular uh, endpoints. So let's have a look at um, uploading a, um, well, let's have a look at downloading. So I'm going to switch over to, it's very small here. <laughs> um, uh, this is a solution. I'll just see if I can zoom out. No, I can't. Oh, yes, I can. Excellent. So hopefully that's not too small. but. Um, this is a, a solution. We do a lot of work with the FileMaker platform. FileMaker is an Apple subsidiary. They make a platform for Mac, Windows, iOS, and the cloud. And it's popular with small businesses. And so a lot of small businesses uh, use FileMaker and um, uh, WooCommerce. But they use FileMaker to run the business. And they've got to get data out of FileMaker into WooCommerce and orders out of WooCommerce into FileMaker. So uh, this is an example of how it might work. I'm going to go to my little orders tab. and. Um, I'm going to say, get me all the orders between these two dates. And I'm just going to hit uh, import orders. And that's going to go and pull the a make a request to the API, get a, a date range of orders, and uh, they will download it successfully. So uh, if we have a look at one of those, um, you can see it's pulled down the, the order. Uh, it's, it would have got all the order line items uh, as well and all the taxes and so on. And if I look at my um, metadata tab, um, so I've just passed out the whole sort of order uh, array that's come back. There's, the, uh, there's an example of a custom field. It's called shipping phone number. There's, there is no shipping phone number field in, um, in WooCommerce. Um, so we've created a custom field for that, and that's, that's how we can capture that. OK, um, if I wanted to upload a product, I've got a uh, created a blank product here. I've filled in all the mandatory fields, such as the status, 
and the uh, price and the description and the name and the uh, inventory settings. And that's pretty much it for the mandatory stuff. And I've said I've got an image um, and the ID is, is 3556. That's already in my uh, WordPress uh, media library. So now if I go and um, push that up to uh, WooCommerce, uh, that's been uploaded. So if I switch over to my uh, WooCommerce site and look at my products, just refresh that and zoom out. Uh, there you can see the product's being created and it's got the image. So that's how easy it is to upload a single product and obviously I could do that in bulk and upload a whole series of products. And oh, I meant to show you how to create the API keys. So um, here I'm in WooCommerce. Um, in, uh, the, so I go to uh, WooCommerce, I go to the advanced section and then I just go to, so don't confuse it with the legacy API, just ignore that. Just go to the REST API and uh, click the add key. And uh, basically you give it a description. So demo, choose the user you want to associate with the uh, key. Then you need to set the permission. So um, you can make it read, write, or uh, read and write, depending on whether you're going to be just retrieving data or you want to be uh, up updating data as well. And then you click uh, generate API key and uh, there's your keys. Now at this point you've got to go and copy and paste them and store them somewhere else because as soon as you leave this screen you'll never be able to see them again and you'll have to go and create a new set as well. Um, yeah, so once you go back and leave this page, um, there's my keys that I just created but if I go into it again uh, it's not going to show me the keys. It'll tell me the last few digits of the consumer key and I can go and work out what they are if I had them stored somewhere but um, if you didn't make a note of them delete and start again or revoke the key yeah okay I think uh, that was it for my demos um, yeah at this point I'm happy to open up for questions if you've got any questions out there Hi, thanks. Um, I'm curious about how you build in resilience against failure, especially when you're talking about webhook triggered API calls. Uh -huh. uh, if you've got network problems, the request times out, you're likely facing a um, unsynchronized or unmatched data in your two systems. I'm mm. wondering about how you approach that. Yeah, that's a, that's a tricky one. <laughs> we don't have a perfect solution for that. Um, uh, yeah, because the, the webhook won't continue, won't try X number of times over X period of time. I think it's a, it's a once only from memory. Uh, so if that doesn't work, um, the only way we know about that order is the email that we get from WooCommerce to say you've got a new order. And um, it, it's someone's job in our office to go and just check the orders in our system and um, make sure everything's there. So th th we'd sort of pick it up quickly. But um, uh, if it's not there, well, the email has the WooCommerce order ID. So we just copy and paste that into a field and hit uh, download order from WooCommerce and we get it that way. And we're not doing l large volumes of orders so we can sort of li live with that process. Um, uh, yeah, there's, uh, the, um, uh, some customers have, have gone down the road where they don't, where they, they use a, a, a better sort of um, uh, uh, destination for receiving the webhook like an AWS hosted service or something that's very unlikely to ever go down and always be accessible. And then they um, they pull the orders down from there, but yeah, it's it's a tough one that one. Um, when things break and they don't work, and then you got to yeah, manually pull them down and yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, it's just one over there. Um, yeah, just about the URL when you said like you get it from a third party link for the images, does it import it into the WordPress media library? It does, yes. It does. So, um, yeah, you want to avoid duplicates because if you include that URL with every time you upload the product, it'll just keep downloading that. So, yeah, that, that uh, photo, for example, has to be publicly accessible by, so WooCommerce can download it. And yeah, it's going to add it to the media library and create a record in there and you can always reference it by itself. It'll, it'll return the ID of that um, uh, image 
as part of the product uh, record that comes back, so you can sort of capture that and store that in your system, so you don't have to, so it'll never upload it again. But yes, every, every new image that you upload will get imported into WordPress, yeah. Cool. And will the slides be like posted somewhere? Um, yeah, I don't know if the slides are centrally posted anywhere, but I'll, I'll certainly put them on my, on my website um, in the next couple of days. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Any more questions? I had one about um, capabilities. Does the, um, if you authenticate using the, the customer key and secret, do you get full capabilities or is it restricted to like an admin role or an edit shop owner role? Well, it's, it's when you create, uh, I'll just create a new one. Um, Uh, at, these are the two settings here that determine that. It's the, whether you say read, write, or read and write, and um, which user you want to associate the um, API keys with. So uh, if you just say read, it'll never be able to update records. If you say write, it'll only ever be able to update records. And if you say read and write, it can, it can do anything in, uh, in the back end of WooCommerce, yeah. All right, so, so it's a little bit separated from WordPress's capabilities. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's the, yeah, the WordPress API and the WooCommerce API are two separate endpoints at the end of the day. And yeah, don't, apart from images, they sort of have nothing to do with each other, even though the data is stored in posts and post meta and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Got it. Thanks. Well, thank you very okay, much, thank Andrew. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, if we could just thank. Andrew.